Hi, I'm Jeff Andre, an account executive with Arkiva. Thanks for joining us here on Arkiva Spotlight. Today we're back to talk with Vicki Fulmer, an optimization expert here at Arkiva. Vicki's with us today to talk about her recent blog, What is Happening to Our Supply Chains? Vicki, thanks for joining me. Hi, Jeff. Glad to be here. Thanks. Absolutely. Vicki, as noted in your blog, there's a lot going on with today's supply chains. Unfortunately, a lot of bad. How do you see it? Well, first of all, I, I just want to make the point that what the media is talking about today when they talk about supply chains is really just one part of the supply chain, and that's the distribution part. Um, here at Akiva and um, and in the industry, really the supply chain is much more than that. It's it's the demand planning, the the raw material procurement, production planning, and distribution planning. So so when we think about supply chain, we think about the whole start to finish, but surely right now the distribution is an issue. Um, you know, what we're seeing is the result of supply chains just getting bigger and bigger and more complex, uh, more uncertainty, uh, you know, weather, COVID, politics, you name it. There's, it's just getting harder and harder to forecast. It's getting harder and harder to plan. Um, so really just looking at how do we manage this ever growing beast really is what we're looking at. Yeah, you asked in the blog, you know, how did we get here? So, you know, how did we? Well, one of the ways we got here is is that we we're getting better at what we do. Technology is getting better. Computers are getting better. We're able to handle more complexity in our supply chains. Um, and and so we, we continue to be able to, at least on the surface, manage um, this, as I said, this ever growing beast and um, it's kind of gotten us to a point where uh, we, it's really too big to manage. So um, instead of thinking about how do we continue to wrestle with all of these issues, um, I, I'd like to think about how do we make the issues go away? And so that's sort of where I'm leaning. Um, part of what got us here is uh, sh looking at short term. Uh, you know, we're so driven by quarterly quarterly revenues, quarterly profits that the companies are forced to to take these short term um, instant fixes just to get us through the next the next uh, crisis. Right. There's a lot of kicking the can down the road when it comes to uh, environmental health, when it comes to um, uh, just a uh, foreign suppliers and the unethical sourcing that we see American jobs, you know, you name it. There's a lot of issues that we just aren't dealing with because we're too busy just getting through the day. No, I understand that. Now you discussed several reasons why today's supply chains are breaking. Now, could you walk me through those? Um, yeah, yeah, I highlighted. I mean, obviously there's a lot of reasons um, in my blog. I highlighted three big ones. Um, one of them is uh, outsourcing and production. You know, this this move to China because China is less expensive. Um, we foresee growing markets in China. And so there was a real push to move things um, to Asia for manufacturing. Um, it allowed prices to stay low, which consumers liked. And um, yeah, we had longer lead times, but we kept a little extra inventory and, and decided that the trade off was worth it. Um, what we're finding now is that three out that three month lead time um, is, is causing more and more disruptions, more and more uncertainty, and it's not allowing us to respond to these disruptions in a reasonable manner. Um, the, the other reason that I think we're seeing problems is this ever expansion of, pr of product lines. Um, customer, manufacturers are always looking for that next big thing to bring in more demand to, to make more sales. Mm -hmm. um, and so we do this by offering more bells and whistles and 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 the, every year we come out with a new, new the newer model that everybody just has to have. And so we're, we're again we're adding complexity. Um, and that just opens opens things up for disruptions and things become more precarious and it just gets harder to manage. Um, finally, the other reason is is this notion of a growth economy. I know capitalism and free market and and uh, all of this got us where we got us through the industrial revolution and it got us to where we are today. But what we're seeing with this growth mindset, um, and you know that's why we have these expanding product lines. And what we're seeing is that um, 
it, it, it's exacerbating the inequality um, gap. It's exacerbating the climate change issues, and where it's it's not sustainable, really fundamentally. And so, part of that mindset is causing the problems that we're seeing. Yeah, you know, you touched on this earlier. You know, you, know, you and I both have discussed before. You know, there's no short-term fixes in supply chain. Yeah. If there is, it's usually just a band-aid. You know, you mentioned it. You know, how should companies, you know, be thinking? you know, as to mitigate these issues? Uh, well, you're, you're right. Um, you know, obviously they have to get through the day and they have to, to manage their, their short term um, goals, but companies really need to start thinking long term. Um, one of the sh one short term thing they can do is begin by aligning their, their performance metrics over and over again. I see companies that have um, you know, one part of their business is encouraging production plants to run at 100%. Um, and then I, well, you have another part of the business that is encouraging uh, the company to, to minimize their inventory. Well, you can't do both things at once, right? So there's a lot of disconnect between what's driving um, a company. And so we have to get away from this silo mentality and really start looking at the supply chain and the overall business as one integrated unit and look to see what's moving that entire um, entity into the direction that you want to go. Um, ideally, supply chains need to be shortened. We've expanded, 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 and we've seen that that where that's gotten us. We have to start shortening the supply chain physically. You know, let's bring manufacturing back to the U.S., which, by the way, is something that has been an issue for a long time. This is this is going to solve a lot of problems, right? And I think if if we move manufacturing back to the US we're going to it's going to come with higher wages which again is something that needs to happen but it won't happen as long as you're focusing on short term um short term revenues and um cutting costs at wherever you can you have to start looking at bigger things um again moving away from a growth mindset and more towards a triple bottom line so it's not just about profits it's about people and planet and when you start to consider that, um, you will find that the the entire entity moves forward and you you stop seeing this tug of war that's going on where, uh, you, you know, one step forward, two steps back. Um, more and more, uh, you, you may have heard the term um, or the acronym ESG, Environmental Social Governance Criteria, that investors are starting to look at when they look at companies. And they're finding that companies that are focusing on ESG, that are focusing on not just the financial aspect, but the social aspect and the environmental aspect, that these companies are actually outperforming traditional profit-driven companies. And, and that becomes a win-win. They're performing better, and so the investors are, are investing more, and it becomes, um, you get into this now positive spiral, upward spiral, rather than this downward spiral that we continue to find ourselves in. Makes a good sense. Vicki, thanks so much for your time today. I certainly appreciate you discussing your most recent blog with us and sharing a few inside planning perspectives. You know, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. We look forward to picking up the conversation the next time right here on our Kiva Spotlight. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. You're welcome.